2003 World Championships would prove, at the time, to be Britain's best ever. A key part of that success was Katie Sexton, who travelled to Barcelona in hopeful mood. I was quite confident in myself that it could go well, and I didn't want to wear my heart on my sleeve with that. I was just trying to, you know, keep a few cards to myself. And I'm always an athlete that could get to the major meet and go faster. That's I've got a proven track record for that. So I knew I was capable of that, and it was almost a case of don't think about it. You just know it's going to happen. You don't have to think and stress and worry about that because you know you've done what you need to do to be there and to make those improvements. First up was the 100 metres backstroke, but the final didn't have an auspicious start. And I mean, before that race, I sort of got ready, I always bent forward, sort of stretched my hamstrings, touched my toes, my suit ripped. And that was back in the day with the zip up ones. And I had a hole probably about that big under the zip. I'm just getting in the water, I can't do anything about it. So I had to swim with it. It did distract me. And I honestly think, even now, if that hadn't happened, I'd have won that. Ripped suit or not, Katie came home in second place and moved on to what was generally considered to be her better event, the 200 metres. I think I was, I was probably very confident after the 100 and thought, well, I'm obviously swimming really well, what am I going to do on the two? It wasn't, the 100 wasn't as fast as I'd gone at the trial, so I was disappointed in the time, which is stupid because you just got a silver medal at World Championships, but I knew I could go faster and if my suit hadn't ripped, I probably could have. Well, the silver was fantastic. Can she win gold? No British woman has ever won a gold medal at the World Swimming Championships. What a fantastic opportunity she's got in five. And I remember being in the call room and I was really nervous. But at the same time, I was so in control. I didn't have to think about what I was doing because I knew it would happen. And I've got a book, a sports psychology book, and there's people like Michael Jordan and people like that and they've sort of said things. Um, and one bit that sticks out and it makes sense to me because I've been there and I've experienced it and they call it a white moment because you're so in control of everything that's going on you just you just know, you just have a feeling that it, it's going to happen and that was exactly how that felt I didn't have to think about it, I just, I just knew it was going to be something special I can't explain it any more than that, it's really bizarre Presumably no suit mishaps on this race? No, I wore a different one without a zip. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest qualifier Stanislava Komarova of Russia made a fast start, but Katie was well placed at the halfway mark. And Sexton in five. One day now, one lane down for that leader. And at halfway mark, it's Komarova first and Shemnikova second. Sexton is third. Sexton well placed. Sexton normally goes quite comfortably down the first hundred and then really picks it up. And if she can do that here from this position, Adrian, She's very, very well placed. It looks though like Komarova just starting to make a move here. Well, Sexton out in 64 seconds. She's going to come after. She's going to have to come back tremendously quickly to get that that second hundred. As well with being backstroke, I always have a look at the scoreboard, which I know I shouldn't do. And I think I turned obviously at the hundred and I saw what I'd split. And I was like, okay, right, let's work a little bit harder. You need to pull your finger out a little bit here. I think it was a case of if you're with them at 150, yours. So still then Komarova of Russia. Leading and leading very well now. She's taken about a metre off to the rest of the field, certainly a metre off Sexton down that last 50. Very good turn though from Sexton, very good indeed in five. Leading up in two, those Holzer from USA. I mean, I wasn't even aware she was there. I could just see Comer over next to me. And that was it. What was I lane five? She was lane two. So on your back, it's, it's quite hard to see. That without having a proper glance over your shoulder. <laughs> well, uh, Sexton is coming back. Sexton in five. Look at this. Holds her up at the top there. Sexton in five. The Portsmouth North Sea swimmer is coming back. At any point in that last 25, did you think I'm going to win this? I don't really know. I think I thought, well, I've got her, so I've got to be in the chant with something. And you could you could hear the crowd getting a little bit louder because it's obviously quite a close race. And you just think, just grit your teeth and go. Long arm reach for the wall. The Portsmouth North Sea swimmer is coming back. Can we win gold? She's done it. And I think you look at the scoreboard and it always seems to be so slow to actually register time. It's just sort of slow motion life. And you look up and you're like, oh my God, I've done it. I can't believe it. Because it's just an instant reaction of what you do. Because you just, you go on what you feel you should do. And for me, that was a woo. <laughs> So you'd swum a huge PB, Commonwealth record. What, what is it that, that you see first? Is it number one Place. or is it the time? Yeah, time's irrelevant. 
Patty Sexton. World champion, women's 200 meters backstroke, Katie Sexton. Uh, you feel, well, I know I felt almost a little bit embarrassed because it's just like, well, what do I do? I've not been here sort of really very much. I don't, you, you almost don't know how to deal with it because you're suddenly flung into a situation that you've never dealt with really before. Or you don't have much experience of, of being there unless you're Michael Phelps or somebody like that. <laughs> is, there, is there anything particular from that, that presentation that sticks in the mind? Or is it all just a big blur? And it's just... I think you, you're always on the roster and you just think, do I sing along or don't I sing along? <laughs> Do I look silly if I get the words wrong? Do I smile? I don't know, because you just... You can't help smiling. But it's just, I wish that anthem was longer. Because it's such a short moment that you get to actually savour what you've done. It's, it's a moment you want to last longer. Yeah. Yeah, you never get the time to really appreciate it in that actual situation. I found my family, so that was quite cool. It was nice that actually they could be there to see that. Because they weren't going to come out originally. <laughs> what changed their mind? Well, they'd seen the hundred. Oh really? <laughs> and they're like, well maybe we go. So they got on a plane during the week to come and see Yeah. Them. But they're glad that they did. Yeah, I'm glad they did. It's nice to revisit it. It's, I think it's only now my life has changed. I'm not so deeply involved in swimming. And I'm not surrounded by people that have got the same drive and the same passion to be at the Olympics and to be the best in their sport. I'm actually appreciating what I've achieved in my swimming, because I, I haven't before, so it, it's quite nice, finally, I appreciate what I've done 10 years ago.